Welcome back to our week-long content of the ROG Phone 6 and today what we have here is the new Aeroactive Cooler 6 and the reason why we're doing this is because ROG changed a lot of things regarding this new cooler because they also included a brand new Peltier cooler inside as well and then they also changed the layout entirely and it is not compatible with the ROG Phone 5 so We'll go through all of our data testing, how we're going to use it and also how comfortable it is because as you can see here, it's kind of bulky. So let's begin. So when we look at the box, we can see that this box is rather huge as you can see here. And that is because we have a total of two things inside. One is the included case. Now the phone case is technically just the same as the one included with the ROG Phone 6 Pro but it has a larger cutout for the cooler to keep in contact with your phone because the cooler is actually huge considering that the wingspan is very wide. Now how to install the cooler is also very simple. We need to press the button at the top of the cooler to release the clamp and then slide the phone in and connect the USB Type-C port and then snap the clamp back in and then the Aeroactive Cooler 6 has been installed successfully as we can see from this RGB like show here. So the Aeroactive Cooler 6 has a total of 4 different buttons so we have the L1 and R1 shoulder buttons at the top of the curvature here which means they are meant to be pressed downwards and then two larger buttons which is the L2 and R2 buttons which are pressed inwards towards the cooler. Now. Before we get into that, mapping the buttons is exactly the same like how we did for the air triggers so we just do the same for the Aeroactive Cooler 6 and we're set. So you might wonder, hey can I just use the buttons on the Aeroactive Cooler 6 instead of the included air triggers on the phone? Well, not really. Because throughout my experience, I think that the cooler is designed in such a special way that it is meant to be used in tandem with the air triggers that are built onto the ROG Phone 6. However, depending on how many buttons you want to use on the Aeroactive Cooler 6, you might want to change how you hold the phone because take a look at these two shots here. If I'm only going to use the L1 and R1 buttons, then the grip is going to be rather loose. But if I want to use all of the four buttons, then I'll have to grip the phone in a very specific way. But no matter what buttons of the Aeroactive Cooler 6 that I want to use, my four fingers are always around the air triggers and they are always free to do whatever I want. And this goes to show how the cooler is cleverly designed to make the user hold the device in a particular way, but whether or not it is comfortable to hold is another question on its own. I played Genshin Impact and while the L1 and R1 buttons are great as they work in tandem with the air triggers on the phone, um, I did realize that the phone is constantly getting pushed down so I have to use the base of my palm here to negate that force as well just to push up the phone. But when I want to use the L2 and R2 buttons then the phone will get pushed upwards as in towards my face so I have to use the palm of my thumb here at uh, the wrist palm area to you know clamp the phone a bit better so that it wouldn't move that much. And for big hands like mine, I find that the overall grip is okay, it's just that I don't really want to use the L2 and R2 buttons that much because they are positioned in such an awkward way and they also require quite a lot of force to actuate the button which is just not that comfortable to use for me. One of the improvements that I like to see is actually, you know, let us add another additional grip at the back of the device so we can hold it better. For example, like you can see this controller here, we got a grip around this part so that I have some place to rest my fingers. And uh, maybe for the Aeroactive Cooler 6, we can have something that is like the Kunai 3 gamepad grip. That is something that can be attached and detached quickly. So I think that would drastically improve the comfort of this cooler. Now let's go back to talk about the Aeroactive Cooler 6. It has a rubber flap at the top so that we can still press the power button even when the cooler is installed. And there are also a lot of RGB at the back of the phone as well. And of course, we can head into the Armory Crate to configure it to however we want. So that's a really nice addition as well. It also has a kickstand which I think it is nice to have and that is how we can put the phone up like this. And this whole setup can also be used in tandem with the Kunai 3 gamepad to create something like this. There's also another USB Type-C port at the bottom of the cooler so that we can charge the phone while the cooler is attached. So now, what I'm gonna do is to plug in the Aeroactive Cooler 6, 
head into the armory crate and configure the cooling mode of the fan. So as you can see here, we have a total of four different modes to choose from. Number one is smart, which is to automatically adjust the cooler according to the temperature of the phone. And then the second mode called cool, which is to turn on the fan only. And then frosty, which is to turn on both the fan and also the thermoelectric cooler, also known as TEC or Peltier cooler. And lastly is frozen which cranks up the fan to its maximum speed and also turning on the thermoelectric cooler at the same time. Now, the frozen mode here will require us to plug the charger directly into the USB Type-C port of the cooler, which we'll get into that later. Okay, so now enough about the buttons. How is the cooling performance of the Aeroactive Cooler 6? Well, this is where things get interesting because I recorded a 30-minute gameplay video with this cooler but I decided that it's not scientific enough since the test was not consistent. Now, to test its cooling performance, I resulted to use 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test which runs 20 cycles consequently. And why we're using this test is because it shows how many degrees Celsius it has risen from the beginning of the test until the end. Of course, I also turned on X mode to generate as much heat as possible. So I did a total of 4 tests. The first test is without any cooler installed, so the phone is bare naked. And the second test is with cool mode. The third test is with the cooler installed in frosty mode. And then the last one is of course in frozen mode. I had to do the last test with the phone inverted because I need to plug in the charger to get the frozen mode working. And the results are rather interesting. So as you can see on this table here, if we compare the results that we got without the fan, then we can see the temperature delta with the fan in cool mode only drops by a total of 4 degrees Celsius. And then if we turn on the Peltier cooler in frosty mode, then the temperature drops by 1 additional degree Celsius. We'll definitely get back into this later. And then the last mode is frozen mode the temperature drops significantly by yet another 5 degrees Celsius. That's a huge temperature delta of 10 degrees Celsius compared to just the bare naked phone. And of course, this also means that you need to bring a power bank with you just to use it in frozen mode and the fan noise is also extremely loud. But what I want to highlight here is the minuscule improvement that the Peltier cooler has. How Peltier cooler works is essentially to use electricity to create a hot side and a cold side of a metal plate. Usually the hot side will have some sort of fan or cooler to blow all the heat away. But in the case of the Aeroactive Cooler 6, there is no way for the heat from the hot side to escape. And judging from what I can infer, that tiny 1 degree Celsius drop might be due to most of the hot side's air has been blown back into the phone itself, which is why we only see 1 degree Celsius of improvement. As for the power consumption of each cooling mode, I can only get an estimate as I can only use the ROG Phone 6's battery bypass mode and then changing the fan modes and record what our watt meter number is presenting to us. And I think that this power consumption doesn't really matter that much, but these are the power that the cooler will consume depending on what cooling mode that you're using. In short, does the Aeroactive Cooler 6 works? Yes, but I think only the cold mode will technically have the most effect since it drops the temperature by a total of 4 degrees Celsius and it doesn't require an external power supply to be attached to the cooler as well, which means total portability. But as for the price of this cooler at 349 ringgit, I would say it's definitely a hefty price to pay for an accessory for the phone but it does elevate the gaming experience by a lot so I can't complain. One big issue that I need to point out though is that the Aeroactive Cooler 6 that we have here is made specifically for the ROG Phone 6 only. The ROG Phone 6 only has one USB Type-C port at the side of the phone. However, if we plug in this cooler to the ROG Phone 5 from last year, it fits perfectly fine but it just doesn't work. That is because ROG is going to release yet another version of the Aeroactive Cooler 6 for the ROG Phone 5 and I have no idea why they are doing this because as we can clearly see here, it plugs in just fine. It seems like there's some software lock to prevent the ROG Phone 5 from using the Aeroactive Cooler 6 and also the Aeroactive Cooler 5 from last year cannot be used on the ROG Phone 6 because this phone doesn't have any pogo pins. 
So yeah, that's where we are at right now and that's all we have to share with you about the Adro Active Cooler 6. Do stay tuned for our next video regarding the ROG Phone 6. So hit that like button and also share this video with your friends if you think that this video is helpful and also ring that notification bell because tomorrow, same time, same place, we're going to have yet another video regarding the ROG Phone 6. So yeah, we'll see you there. Goodbye.